The real story of Laura Ingalls and Almenzo Wilder is simply tragic. Laura, best known for her iconic Little House series, well, if you don't tell me, I'll tell Mom. Then you'll have to tell her, and Almanzo, her devoted spouse, shared a life full of victories as well as tragedies. In this fascinating video, we will unfold the pages of history to explore the connected stories of two people who had a lasting impact on American literature. Prepare for a story that narrates love, sorrow, and the wilder enduring spirit, a story that transcends the pages of Little House and into the hearts of those who remain enthralled by Laura's incredible journey. Laura Elizabeth Ingalls Wilder was born to Charles Philip and Caroline Lake Ingalls on February 7, 1867. At the time of Ingalls' birth, the family lived seven miles north of the village of Pepin, Wisconsin, in the Big Woods region of Wisconsin. Ingalls' home in Pepin became the setting for her first book, Little House in the Big Woods, 1932. She was the second of five children, following older sister, Mary Amelia. Three more children would follow, Caroline Celestia, Carrie, Charles Frederick, who died in infancy, and Grace Pearl. Ingalls, Wilder's birth site, is commemorated by a replica log cabin at the Little House Wayside in Pepin. Ingalls was a descendant of the Delano family, the ancestral family of U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. One of her paternal ancestors, Edmund Ingalls, originally from Skirbeck, Lincolnshire, England, immigrated to America and settled in Lynn, Massachusetts. Remarkably, Laura was the seventh great-granddaughter of Mayflower passenger Richard Warren. Additionally, she was a third cousin, once removed, of U.S. President and Civil War General Ulysses S. Grant. Laura Ingalls Wilder's life was deeply influenced by her family history and significant connections, inspiring her to write novels that have enchanted readers globally. Born in a log cabin just outside Pepin, Wisconsin, Laura's first home wasn't merely a place of birth, but the foundation for narratives that would fascinate people for generations to come. Under the guidance of her parents, Charles and Caroline Ingalls, Laura's family ventured across the American Midwest starting in 1869, two years after she was born. This journey laid the foundation for much of Laura's literary work, especially evident in Little House on the Prairie. Laura's early experiences, marked by the joy and challenges of a pioneer's life, involved moving from one Midwestern settlement to another. The Ingalls family, like prairie nomads, carried with them dreams that would later flourish in Laura's writings. In 1874, they settled in Walnut Grove, Minnesota, a location that would not only feature in her books, but also be immortalized through the television series Little House on the Prairie, which aired from 1974 to 1982 bringing Laura's childhood tales to life for viewers around the world. However, Walnut Grove was not a lasting residence for the Ingalls family. After two years of failed crops, they were compelled to move to Burr Oak, Iowa. Laura's story expanded in Burr Oak, where her family took an active role in managing a hotel in 1877. Amidst their nomadic life, Laura welcomed a new sister, Grace, a moment of joy amidst the challenge of adapting to a new environment. The family's journey did not stop there. They returned to Walnut Grove before moving to the Dakota Territory in 1879. However, Laura's narration omits a brief period from 1876 to 1877 when they lived near Burr Oak, creating a direct leap from one chapter of her life to another as seen in By the Shores of Silver Lake. Laura Ingalls Wilder's tales were predominantly set in the Dakota Territory, where the vast, wild prairies served as the backdrop for her stories. In the winter of 1879 to 1880, Charles Ingalls officially filed for a homestead, and DeSmet, South Dakota, 
became the permanent home for the Ingalls family. The harsh winter of 1880-1881, vividly depicted in The Long Winter, marked a significant episode in Laura's life, illustrating the challenges and resilience of the pioneer spirit that defines her narratives. The Ingalls family's resilience in the face of nature's most severe challenges was remarkable. Laura's blind sister, Mary, and their parents were part of the foundation of a new town, emerging from the frozen expanse. Once settled, DeSmet became a pivotal place for Laura, where she went to school, took on various part-time jobs, and built lasting friendships. Among these connections was Almanzo Wilder, a bachelor homesteader whose role in Laura's life would become profoundly significant. In Little Town on the Prairie and these happy golden years, Laura reflects on her time in Desmet as a critical period of growth and maturation. The vibrant life of the frontier pulses through her writing, capturing the essence of a young woman facing the challenges and delights of prairie life. Embarking on a journey beyond their historical significance, Laura Ingalls. Wilder's stories echo universal themes of resilience, the strength of family bonds, and the quest for a place to call home. Just two months shy of her 16th birthday, on December 10, 1882, Laura accepted her first teaching position, marking the start of a new chapter beyond the prairie tales she would later immortalize. This role would significantly shape her early adult life. Although teaching was not her initial passion, economic necessities nudged her towards the profession. When not attending classes in Desmet, she found herself educating young minds in one-room schoolhouses. Laura's foray into teaching spanned three terms, and despite her teaching certificate, as noted in William Anderson's book Laura's Album, being classified as third grade, it symbolized a bold step into the world of education. Her teaching career commenced in a small country schoolhouse located 12 miles from her parents' home, where she embarked on the challenging yet rewarding task of shaping the futures of her young students, further adding to the rich tapestry of experiences that influenced her writing and her life. Although the landscape of her life underwent many changes, Laura Ingalls Wilder's dedication to learning and financial responsibility never wavered. In Little Town on the Prairie, she narrates receiving her teaching certificate on December 24, 1882, infusing her journey with a dramatic flair. Laura's choice to teach was more than just a job. It was a response to the limited work opportunities available to women at the time. With a family in need of financial support and her older sister Mary attending a school for the blind, Laura rose to the occasion to help bridge the financial gap. Her path to teaching was also shaped by her childhood experiences, where she and her siblings often taught themselves due to the family's constant relocations. Between 1883 and 1885, Laura taught three terms of school and also worked for a local dressmaker showcasing her adaptability and perseverance. She pursued high school education as well, but prioritized her teaching career over graduating, illustrating that education was both a personal pursuit and a means of financial support. The challenge of teaching in a one-room schoolhouse, located miles from her family's home, was mitigated by weekend visits from a family friend, Almanzo Wilder. These visits not only provided her with much-needed support, but also foreshadowed the significant role Almanzo would play in her life, further highlighting Laura's resilience and dedication to her family and career amidst the challenges of frontier life. This budding relationship with Almanzo Wilder bridged Laura's teaching duties and the comforts of home, hinting at the new chapters yet to unfold in her life. Laura's candid acknowledgement that teaching was not her passion offers a deeper insight into her motivations. Her journey into teaching was driven not by personal satisfaction, but by a sense of duty and responsibility. 
teaching served as a means for Laura to deal with life's complexities, supporting her family's financial needs, while also enriching her own experiences, which would later be woven into her literary works. Their romance, which flourished through shared wagon rides, set the stage for a new journey together as Laura Ingalls Wilder and Almanzo Wilder exchanged vows on August 25, 1885, in the serene setting of a congregational church in South Dakota. With this union, Laura stepped away from her teaching career to embark on life as a wife and, eventually, a mother. Their early marriage was filled with endearments, with Laura calling him manly, and he in turn affectionately calling her Bess, a nod to her middle name, Elizabeth. Their life in Desmet, South Dakota, flourished as they began to build a life together, with Almanzo providing a stable home through his successful homestead claim. The warmth of their relationship welcomed the birth of their daughter, Rose, on December 5, 1886, bringing joy and love into their home. However, the young family soon faced a series of heart-rending challenges. In August 1889, they endured the loss of their son, who passed away just a month after birth, a profound reminder of life's precarious nature. The family's trials continued when Almanzo contracted diphtheria, resulting in partial paralysis. These adversities tested their resilience, casting shadows of sorrow and hardship over their early marital years, yet also demonstrating the strength and bond of their partnership as they navigated life's unpredictability together. In 1890, tragedy struck the Wilder household as a fire devastated their home, reducing everything they owned to ashes. The years that followed tested Laura and Almanzo Wilder's marriage as they faced a relentless onslaught of adversities. The destruction of their barn, a mysterious fire that devoured their hay and grain, and an accidental fire caused by a stove that demolished their home foretold the difficulties ahead. These calamities, coupled with a severe drought, plunged the family into debt and illness, rendering their 320 acres of priory land barren and unproductive. Laura Ingalls Wilder chronicled these formidable years in The First Four Years, published posthumously in 1971. The book offers a detailed account of loss, challenges, and a steadfast spirit that persevered in hope despite overwhelming odds. The Wilder's saga transcended the confines of the prairie, illustrating a relentless determination to overcome life's harshest obstacles. In search of a more hospitable environment, the Wilders moved to Westville, Florida in 1892. However, the unfamiliar humidity and a profound sense of not belonging compelled them to return to the familiar surroundings of Desmet around 1890. Seeking solace after a series of hardships, Laura and Almanzo Wilder briefly returned to Almanzo's parents' farm in Spring Valley, Minnesota. This period marked a significant phase in their lives, where they leaned heavily on the belief that resilience could emerge from shared moments of joy and the steadfast bond of their marriage. Together, they faced sickness, loss, and displacement with each challenge reinforcing their commitment to each other and their journey towards stability. Their return from Minnesota symbolized not just a physical return to stability, but also a deeper emotional grounding. They purchased a small home, a tangible representation of their efforts to secure a stable, grounded life amidst the whirlwind of challenges they had faced. Laura's early years of marriage characterized by love, loss, and a continuous quest for stability, transitioned her from a prairie teacher to a resilient partner, facing adversity head-on. Her writings immortalize the Wilder's journey, standing as a testament to an enduring spirit that persevered despite the hardships whispered by the prairie winds. In 1894, the Wilders turned the page on their past trials, seeking and eventually finding a semblance of permanence. They moved to a 200-acre farm in the Ozarks of Mansfield, Missouri, marking the end of their wanderings and the beginning of a new chapter. 
this farm would not only become their sanctuary, but also the backdrop for Laura's successful writing career, which would captivate readers for generations with tales of resilience, family, and the pioneering spirit. In Mansfield, Missouri, the Wilders found a landscape ripe with the promise of a new beginning. Using their hard-earned savings, they took a leap of faith and made a down payment on an undeveloped piece of land just outside the town. This land would soon come to be known as Rocky Ridge Farm. At Rocky Ridge Farm, which they affectionately named, the Wilders built a farmhouse and fully embraced a life of self-sufficiency, with livestock and crops becoming their daily companions. Their new journey began in a humble log cabin, modest and unassuming, yet it stood as a blank slate for the perseverance and resilience they would demonstrate. The early days on the farm were characterized by simplicity, with their income primarily coming from selling wagon loads of firewood in town for 50 cents each. Financial security was not immediate. It was a gradual process, akin to a seed slowly taking root in fertile ground. As they settled into their new life, they planted apple trees, laying the foundation for future harvests. However, the fruits of their labor were not immediate. It took seven years for the apple trees to bear fruit, a testament to the patience and resilience required in their quest for a prosperous life at Rocky Ridge Farm. In an unexpected but welcome turn of events, Almanzo's parents gifted them the deed to the house they were renting in Mansfield, providing a significant boost to their endeavors. This gesture allowed them to expand their holdings and further develop their farm. By 1900, they had made enough progress to sell their townhouse and focus entirely on the farm, using the proceeds to complete their farmhouse. What started as a small, windowless cabin on roughly 40 acres had blossomed into a productive farm, specializing in poultry, dairy, and fruit, highlighted by a spacious 10-room farmhouse. This transformation underscored their hard-earned success and commitment to the land. Laura Ingalls. Wilder became a prominent figure in the farming community, engaging in various clubs and advocating for regional farm associations. Leveraging the agricultural knowledge gained from their time in Desmet, the Wilders diversified Rocky Ridge Farm to include a variety of ventures, such as a poultry business, a dairy farm, and an extensive apple orchard. Laura's transition from a nomadic prairie life to the stewardship of a thriving farmstead exemplified their resilience. Her expertise in poultry farming and rural living led to her being sought after as a speaker across the region, further establishing her as a living testament to the belief that dedication, hard work, and patience can turn even the most challenging landscapes into a place of prosperity and fulfillment. Laura Ingalls Wilder's journey into the realm of writing and editing began in 1911 when she was asked to write an article for the Missouri Ruralist. This opportunity marked the start of a significant phase in her life, as her role as a columnist and editor became a staple of her daily activities until the mid-1920s. Her column, As a Farm Woman Thinks, quickly gained popularity among rural Ozarkian readers who eagerly awaited her insights on a variety of topics. These ranged from the nuances of home and family life to broader issues such as World War I and the international travels of her daughter, Rose Wilder Lane. Through her writing, Laura shared her perspectives on the changing roles and opportunities for women, offering a voice that deeply connected with her readers. In addition to her work as a columnist, she also took on a paid role with the local Farm Loan Association, where she was instrumental in providing small loans to local farmers. This work not only contributed to the community, but also offered a stable source of income for the Wilders. 
Although financial prosperity remained elusive until the widespread success of the Little House books, Laura's contributions to farm papers and her involvement in the Farm Loan Association laid the groundwork for the stable financial footing that would later support her and her family. By 1924, after more than a decade of dedicated work in the agricultural press, Laura Ingalls Wilder had firmly established herself as a significant figure within her community and the wider world of farm journalism. Under the mentorship of her daughter, Rose Wilder Lane, Laura Ingalls. Wilder transformed into a disciplined and accomplished writer. Professor John E. Miller noted her ability to produce thoughtful, readable prose that appealed to a broad audience. This period of her life was pivotal, with Rose playing a crucial role in refining her mother's writing skills to achieve greater success. As an established writer herself, Rose saw the potential in Laura's writing as a means to enhance their retirement income and actively supported her mother's foray into publishing, including facilitating Laura's contributions to the Country Gentleman magazine, which offered insights into the life on a farm. In 1928, recognizing the value of providing a conducive writing environment for her parents, Lane commissioned the construction of an English-style stone cottage on adjacent property. However, the financial stability they sought was challenged by the economic downturn following the stock market crash of 1929, leading to significant investment losses for the Wilders, including Lane. Despite these financial setbacks, they retained ownership of the 200-acre farm that had become central to their identity and livelihood. In the midst of the Great Depression and following the deaths of her mother in 1924 and her older sister in 1928, Laura found solace in writing. She penned an autobiographical manuscript, Pioneer Girl, in 1930, aiming to generate additional income. She sought Rose's guidance on the manuscript, and this mother-daughter collaboration eventually led to the publication of Little House in the Big Woods in 1932. This marked the beginning of the Little House series, which would immortalize Laura Ingalls Wilder's experiences and significantly impact American literature. The publication and success of Little House in the Big Woods became a defining moment in Laura Ingalls Wilder's career, propelling her onto a literary path that would establish her legacy. Her evolution from a rural columnist to the beloved author of timeless classics is a testament to resilience, shaped by the fluctuating challenges of life. Wilder's journey, set against the changing American landscape, has left a lasting impact on literature and captured the hearts of readers around the world. The Little House series, rooted in the rich soil of Laura Ingalls Wilder's childhood experiences, gained momentum in the 1910s, significantly propelled by her daughter, Rose Wilder Lane. Lane, who was a reporter for the San Francisco Bulletin at the time, recognized the extraordinary potential in her mother's vivid recounting of pioneer life. She encouraged Laura to take her storytelling beyond the family circle urging her to share these vibrant memories with a broader audience. Despite initial rejections by publishers in the 1920s, Laura's manuscript, Pioneer Girl, laid the foundation for what would eventually become the Little House series. This encouragement and subsequent success underscored the universal appeal of Wilder's narratives, which resonated with readers across generations for their authenticity, warmth, and the portrayal of resilience against hardship. Laura Ingalls. Wilder's transition from personal recollections to a series of published works highlights the enduring charm of her stories, emphasizing the power of perseverance, the significant role of family support, and the captivating essence of her narrative voice. Despite facing numerous setbacks, Laura Ingalls Wilder's unwavering determination fueled her relentless pursuit of literary dreams. Through years of meticulous refinement, her work underwent a significant transformation, including a change in title and a shift in narrative perspective to third person. In 1932, Wilder debuted 
Little House in the Big Woods, the inaugural book of a series that would win the hearts of readers across generations. This autobiographical series, affectionately known as The Little House Books, offers a glimpse into Laura's cherished memories, transporting readers across the diverse landscapes that shaped her upbringing. Working in close collaboration with her daughter, Rose, Laura crafted a series that not only chronicled her personal experiences, but also captured the essence of the various places she had called home. Little House in the Big Woods introduced readers to Pepin, Wisconsin, retracing Laura's childhood adventures through the magical forests that surrounded her. Each book in the series invited readers on a literary journey to another significant chapter in her life, weaving tales of resilience, family, and the indomitable spirit of pioneer days. Little House on the Prairie explored the expansive landscapes of the prairie, while Farmer Boy offered insights into Almanzo Wilder's childhood on a farm in New York. On the banks of Plum Creek, by the shores of Silver Lake, the Long Winter, Little Town on the Prairie, and These Happy Golden Years each contributed a unique perspective to the narrative tapestry. Laura and Rose's collaborative efforts extended over many years, culminating in a series that has endured as a beloved literary legacy, illustrating the rich tapestry of American pioneer life through the lens of the Ingalls and Wilder family's experiences. Completing the last of the Little House books in 1943, when Laura Ingalls Wilder was 76 years old, marked a significant milestone in her life and literary career. These books, celebrated as timeless classics, have secured Laura's legacy in the annals of literary history. Her storytelling, which spans generations, offers readers more than just tales of pioneer life. It imparts enduring lessons of courage, perseverance, and the unbreakable bonds of family. The Little House series stands as a powerful testament to the impact of storytelling, continuing to captivate readers of all ages. Through the Little House series, readers journey into the heart of Laura's memories, traversing the landscapes that shaped her early life. From the warmth of the hearth in the big woods to the vast prairies and the cozy nooks of Plum Creek, each book unfolds another chapter of Laura's life, rendering her story not just a collection of books, but a deeply immersive experience. The authorship of the Little House series has been a topic of debate, with some suggesting that Rose Wilder Lane, Laura's daughter, played a significant role, possibly as a ghostwriter. However, a closer examination of their correspondence, Lane's diaries, and Wilder's handwritten manuscripts, complete with edit notations, points to a more complex and collaborative process between mother and daughter. This partnership, while occasionally sparking controversy, underscores the depth of their relationship and the shared effort that went into bringing the Little House stories to the public. The series, enriched by this collaboration, offers a window into a pivotal era of American history, celebrated for its portrayal of resilience, adventure, and the simple yet profound joys of family life. Johnny Miller's analysis highlights the nuanced involvement of Rose Wilder Lane in the Little House series, suggesting that her editorial contribution varied across different volumes. For instance, Little House in the Big Woods and These Happy Golden Years saw minimal editing from Lane, with large sections of the text remaining untouched, showcasing Laura Ingalls Wilder's innate narrative skill. Other books in the series, however, experienced more significant input from Lane. Despite this collaboration, Miller posits that Laura's impact on literary heritage outshines that of her daughter. While Lane brought flair to the project, Laura provided the substance, leaving a lasting mark on the world of narrative storytelling. The discussion around the Little House series also extends into the realm of historical fiction's impact on modern perceptions of race relations. Literary scholar Relle Keel points out that Wilder's portrayal of Native Americans in the series 
has faced criticism for perpetuating stereotypes and presenting a limited perspective. This critique underscores a broader conversation about the role of historical fiction in shaping or reinforcing societal views on race and ethnicity. Although the books were once celebrated for their depiction of pioneer life, their examination under contemporary scrutiny reveals the complexities of narrating historical experiences, particularly in relation to the portrayal of indigenous peoples and the dynamics of race relations during the period. Post-colonial writings like Kathy Jet Neil Kijiner's to Laura Ingalls Wilder from her 2017 collection, Yep Jaltok, Poems from a Marshallese Daughter, play a crucial role in the ongoing conversation about Laura Ingalls Wilder's legacy. These works underscore the complexities in Wilder's narratives, prompting readers to critically examine the historical context and the significance of embracing diverse perspectives in understanding our past. Or, Despite the controversies, the Little House series remains a literary gem, offering layers of content that encourage exploration and critical thought. Wilder's storytelling prowess continues to engage audiences, urging them to contemplate the intricate nature of historical narratives. The enduring appeal of Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little House books is undeniable. With their vivid tales of pioneering life on the American frontier in the late 19th century, these books have captivated generations. Originally crafted for elementary school-aged children, the eight-volume series stands as an extraordinary chronicle of the Ingalls family's adventures, resonating with readers of all ages. Irene Smith highlighted the unique charm of Wilder's writing, noting the series' graduated style that appeals to young readers and matures in complexity across the volumes, making it a beloved treasure that spans generations and continues to inspire a deeper appreciation for the nuances of historical storytelling. This progressive approach to storytelling ensured that as readers matured, so too did the depth and richness of the narratives within the Little House series. It became a cherished companion through various stages of childhood and beyond. After the death of Rose Wilder Lane in 1968, her literary executor, Roger Lee McBride, discovered the first four years, which expanded the series to nine volumes. This book, published without Lane's or her executor's edits, offers a heartfelt look into the early days of Laura and Almanzo Wilder's marriage, adding a poignant dimension to the saga. The first four years, serving as a kind of epilogue to these happy golden years, delves deeper into the challenges and joys of the Wilder's early marriage, providing readers with a more intimate glimpse into their lives, Laura Ingalls. Wilder's first royalty check from Harper & Brothers in 1932 amounted to $500, a significant sum at the time, signaling the beginning of the series' lasting impact on the literary world. Since its introduction, the Little House series has been translated into 40 languages, evidencing its global reach and appeal. The collaboration between Laura and her daughter Rose at Rocky Ridge Farm not only brought financial success, but also a host of honors and accolades. The influx of fan mail from around the world attests to the profound impact the stories have had on readers, transcending cultural and geographical boundaries to touch the hearts of millions. More than just literary creations, the Little House books have become a cultural phenomenon intricately woven into the fabric of readers' lives across generations. Laura Ingalls. Wilder's storytelling, with its window into a bygone era, continues to resonate with readers today, imparting timeless lessons of family, resilience, and the pursuit of a better life. The enduring appeal of the Little House series lies not only in its historical narratives, but also in the universal themes it explores, making it a beloved treasure for readers of all ages. In her late 60s, Laura Ingalls Wilder undertook a journey of self-reflection, penning her autobiography, Pioneer Girl. Despite the initial rejections from publishers, who found her candid recounting of pioneer life too raw for their taste, Laura, 
with encouragement from her daughter, Rose Wilder Lane, reshaped her stories for a younger audience. This pivot led to the creation of the cherished Little House series, a collection of books that would endear her to generations of readers. In 2014, the South Dakota State Historical Society published Pioneer Girl, the Annotated Autobiography, offering the public Wilder's original narrative, accompanied by comprehensive annotations. This edition not only preserved Laura's unfiltered recounting of her early life, but also provided readers with rich insights into the historical backdrop against which her adventures unfolded. Pioneer Girl reveals aspects of Wilder's experiences she felt were inappropriate for a children's series, including raw and unsettling events that underscore the harsh realities of pioneer life. These include incidents of accidental self-harm in a state of inebriation and extreme violence within the community, adding layers of complexity to our understanding of the pioneer era. This annotated autobiography offers a more nuanced view of Laura Ingalls Wilder's life and the times she lived in, bridging the gap between the idyllic portrayal in the Little House series and the more gritty reality of pioneer life. It invites readers to explore the depth of Wilder's experiences, providing a fuller picture of the challenges faced by those who ventured into the American frontier. The autobiography Pioneer Girl not only recounts the harrowing experience of losing a home to fire, but also sheds light on previously unknown aspects of Laura Ingalls Wilder's father, enriching our understanding of her family dynamics. These raw and unfiltered narratives underlining the complexity of Wilder's life, illustrating that her fictional works, autobiographical writings, and actual childhood are distinct but deeply intertwined elements of her identity. The aim of the autobiography, as highlighted by its publisher, extends beyond merely recounting events in a linear fashion. It endeavors to delve into the differences and nuances of Wilder's experiences, acknowledging incidents with conflicting or non-existent accounts in various sources. This approach reflects Wilder's resilience and her dedication to authenticity, even when revisiting her life story in her 60s meant challenging traditional expectations of what an autobiography should encompass. The publication of the annotated version of Pioneer Girl in 2014 allows readers to engage with Wilder's narrative on a more profound level. This edition not only preserves the beloved tales from the Little House series, but also invites readers to explore the unfiltered reflections of a woman who courageously shared the untold chapters of her life. Laura Ingalls Wilder and her husband Almanzo returned to the embrace of their farmhouse at Rocky Ridge Farm, a place teeming with the memories of friends who had stayed there during their absences. The landscape of Rocky Ridge Farm underwent changes in the latter years of Laura's life, especially after her daughter, Rose Wilder Lane, left in 1935. Despite this, Laura and Almanzo found solace in the solitude of their homestead, surrounded by the enduring charm of their life's work. Even as they sold off much of their land, the couple remained steadfastly independent, finding joy in the simpler pleasures of tending to their flower beds and vegetable gardens. Their days often featured visits from fans, carloads of admirers, seeking a glimpse of the real-life inspiration behind the beloved Little House books. After Almanzo's passing in 1949, Laura continued to live on the farm with remarkable independence and financial stability for another eight years. She thrived amid the support of neighbors and friends, and her engagement through letters kept her connected with editors, fans, and friends alike who cherished her continued influence. Laura Ingalls Wilder's later years underscored her resilience and independence, characteristics that had defined her life and work. Her enduring presence, maintained through active correspondence and interactions with the broader community, highlighted the significant impact of her storytelling. 
Laura's legacy, built upon the foundations of authenticity, resilience, and a profound connection with readers, continues to resonate, reflecting the timeless appeal of her narratives and the enduring relevance of her life's journey. As autumn took hold in 1956, Laura Ingalls Wilder's health began to deteriorate, with previously undiagnosed diabetes and cardiac issues emerging. Her daughter, Rose, recognizing the seriousness of her mother's condition during a Thanksgiving visit, swiftly arranged for her hospitalization. True to her resilient nature, Laura returned home the day after Christmas, but her health continued to decline. Laura Ingalls Wilder passed away peacefully in her sleep on February 10, 1957, just three days after celebrating her 90th birthday. She was laid to rest beside her husband, Almanzo, in the Mansfield Cemetery in Missouri, marking the earthly end of their enduring love story. Laura's literary legacy, however, continued to flourish beyond her death. Her works entered the public domain in countries where copyright expires 50 years after the author's death, broadening access to her engaging stories. This expansion allowed new generations of readers to discover and cherish her tales of pioneer life. The influence of Laura Ingalls Wilder extended further with the advent of the television show Little House on the Prairie, which aired from 1974 to 1982. Melissa Gilbert's portrayal of Laura captured the hearts of viewers, sparking renewed interest in Wilder's timeless narratives. The Little House legacy has not only endured but thrived, significantly shaping the literary landscape for children and adults alike. Through her vivid storytelling and the enduring appeal of her characters and settings, Laura Ingalls, Wilder has left an indelible mark on American culture and literature, continuing to inspire and delight readers and viewers around the world. Thank you for watching the entire video on the Famous People channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth content. We appreciate your engagement and look forward to sharing more intriguing stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.